I appreciate uh, everybody that came out today. Uh, if you have your Bibles, like we said, we're going to talk about uh, the birth of the church, Pentecost. And I'm not talking about some name over the door. I'm not talking about, you know, uh, something other than the fact that the church of Jesus Christ that got started. You know, we can agree here this morning uh, that the greatest event in mankind that we ever saw was the re resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. And some several weeks later, the second greatest event in all of mankind is the fact that uh, because so many eyewitnesses and everything that happened at the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we can see all those things happening. You know, all those people that went to death, all those people that laid down their life as a testimony to the fact that they saw Jesus Christ died and risen again. They died for the purpose of one thing. They saw Jesus Christ risen. They saw an empty tomb. And they went to their death proclaiming, I saw Jesus live again. And because of that, when they went those 50 days, when they got into Jerusalem, you know, they got there and they were in one mind and one accord. You know, we get to the first right. chapter of Acts oh, and we see that thing. And before I go any farther, I want to send the program out to uh, Tim Farmer and his wife, Kika. We're praying for Kika as well. But, you know, 2,000 years ago, we see all this stuff happening. In the first chapter of Acts, the eighth verse, it says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Yes. Ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all of Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. See, that, is, that was the goal. That was the thing. He told them in the 28th chapter of Matthew, Go ye into all the nations, preaching, teaching the gospel, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Make disciples of all nations. He gave them a commission. And then he said here in the 8th chapter, he goes, But you will receive power. See, when he said that in the 28th chapter of Matthew, they're probably thinking, Lord, how am I going to go and do all this? How am I going to be able to go out there and witness to the masses? How am I going to be able to go out there and make disciples of all nations? How am I going to be able to do all those things? Right. But he said, once you receive power, yeah. then yeah. you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you once again for the privilege of being in the house of God. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we have to read from your holy anointed word. And we thank you, Lord, for the word that you've given us to lead us, to teach us, to guide us in all things. But, Lord, we thank you for the authority of your word because it's by the authority of your word, the power of your spirit, that we're able to overcome the wiles, the temptations, and the wiles of the enemy. And we stand here and we give you the praise and the glory for your word. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Turn the monitors off. Just turn the monitors off back there. We got something feeding back. But anyway, here in the eighth chat, in the that eighth verse, he said, "Once you receive power from on high, once you receive that power, once you're able to do that, then you're going to do it." So they had to receive this first, you know. And it says there, and when he had spoken these things in the ninth verse, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards the heaven, as he looked up, as he went up. Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. See, he was taken up in front of their very eyes. And it says, while they stood there steadfastly looking or intently looking. And like we said in Sunday school, that meant they were standing there with their mouths wide open watching this. Going, How could this happen? How could this happen? He's taken right in front of us. You know, I would probably be all you know, shook up too going, how in the world is happening? And the 11th verse it says, which these two men said, which also said, ye men of Galilee. Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus which is taken from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. The 12th verse says, Then returned they into Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And the 14th verse says, And, all, and these all continue with one accord and in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. See, as they got there, as they went back there, they went back to Jerusalem, they went back to the same upper room that they had the Last Supper back. They went back there and they prayed for 10 days. And they prayed and they carried on. And it says, and it said there in that 14, uh, for 10 days they prayed and they did those things. And then we go all the way to the second chapter of Acts. It says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, 
They were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly yeah. there came a sound from heaven as a yeah. rushing mighty yeah. wind, yeah. and it filled yeah. all the house where they were sitting, and they were appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each yeah. of them. And when they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So as we see that, as they were in that upper room, as they were praying for 10 days, 120 of them, they became with one mind, with one accord. They became as one. Remember the prayer that Jesus prayed. Father, I pray that they were one as we are one. He didn't mean they were the same person. It meant they were there for the same purpose. See, in the body of Christ, we need to be about one purpose. And that is evangelizing the world. That is the commission that Jesus gave us. Right in the 28th chapter of Matthew. We need to go into all the world, teach and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Baptized in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And as these people started to speak with unknown tongues, or other tongues, it says, they began to fill, spill out of the end, it says, and there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. So there were men of God, these Jewish men, devout men, there in Jerusalem. They were there for the Feast of Pentecost. And it says in 6 verse, Now this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how we hear every man in our own tongue of wherein we were born. So all these Jewish people, they came from, they came from not just Israel, they didn't come from just Galilee and Nazareth, but they came from Syria. They came from Greece. They come from the northern coast of Africa. They came from all over. And some of them spoke different languages. Some spoke Greek. Some spoke Latin. Some spoke Syrian. But as these people spilled out of this upper room, they began to speak with other tongues. And they began to witness about Jesus Christ in Greek, in Latin, in Samaritan. And they started speaking in these tongues. And these people were going, hey, what's this I'm hearing? What's this commotion down here in the street? What are these people spilling out of this upper room? What are all these things going on? And the 12th verse, it says, And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. Listen to what I'm about to say. For these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing it's but the third hour of the day. It's nine o'clock in the morning. They've not been drinking. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But this is which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Yeah. See, we need to understand this was spoken. This was prophesied back in the Old Testament. Yeah. Hey, in the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Yeah. And he said, when Jesus Christ said, go into that upper room and tarry until you receive power yeah. from on high. Well, when the Holy Ghost came, they received that power. See, we have the authority of the Word of God. Yeah. But when that Spirit comes, we receive that power. Yeah. And it stands there. And Peter, who just 50 days before denied Jesus three times in the same night. Peter, who stood afar off, who followed afar off, who snuck around in the shadows the night of Jesus' arrest. He stood back there. Now he was standing up going, hey, Ed, there's a lot of people here, but I ain't scared no more. I'm not afraid of I'm not This is the Son of the living God. We get down to the 22nd verse, and he says, Ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the indeterminate counsel and for, and for knowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed his pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held of it. He said, listen, you men of Israel, you know who I'm talking about. You know about Jesus. You've heard about him doing the signs and the wonders and the miracles. You know exactly who I'm talking about. And when you guys helped him be crucified. And he said, guess what? God needed that to happen. Guess what? God knew that was going to happen all along. God knew. So he said, it, he was, it was done. Because God wanted it done. It wasn't done because you guys wanted it done. Yeah. You guys could laugh and everything else, but you helped it be done. Down to the 36th verse, it says, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Yeah. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, or struck suddenly, or just overcome with emotion. When they heard that Jesus was the Lord and the Christ, this same Peter, 
that 50, 50 days earlier were scared, was standing there under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, that new anointing, that new wine. Yes. He stood there and he told them about Jesus Christ. See, we don't have to tell people how bad they are. We don't have to tell people yes. anything other than Jesus Christ yes. is the Son of the living Amen. God. We don't have to tell them about this God. We need to tell them that Jesus Christ good, is the answer. Yes. Jesus Christ, he said, and when they heard that, it said they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. See, we need to understand. We need to repent. Yes. We need to be repent. And a lot of people like, Well, I repented. Did you really? See, God will forgive us, but repentance means I am sorry for what I did. I don't want to do it anymore. Have mercy on me. Forgive me. But too many times people come to God and go, God, forgive me. Yeah, but are you sorry for what you did? Are you planning on stopping doing what you did? See, we need to understand. That's what he said. Repent and be baptized. We need to get rid of all that. We need to repent and, and you know, ask God to forgive us all that and get rid of all that other stuff. And it says, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. See, that Holy Ghost, there's where the power of the Spirit comes Come in. On. That's when we're able to overcome the temptations, the wiles, the scares of Satan. Yeah. When we have the authority of the Word, yeah. when we have the yeah. power of that Spirit yeah. dwelling within us, yeah. once we've repented yeah. and been baptized and received the power of the Spirit of God, then we can go forth and we don't have to worry about the enemy because we're held. We're kept. Yeah. We're covered. We've yeah. gotten the we've gotten the armor of God. We're doing all the things that we need to do. We're walking the way we're supposed to walk. We're talking the way we're supposed to talk. In the 40th verse, it says, And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they glad then they that gladly received his words were baptized, and the same day were added unto them about three thousand souls. Think about that. Just stand it up there. This little group of men. This little group of mostly Galilean fishermen, but there was a tax collector in there, there was a zealot in there, but they were mostly uneducated guys, and they were turning the world up on their ear. They were spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. In and of themselves, they weren't very impressive, but because they knew Jesus, because they had received power from the Spirit of God, now they became powerful men of God. Not power within their self, but powerful men of God because they had the Spirit of God. In the 47th verse, it says, Praising God and having favor with all the people. And here I want you to hear this. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. The Lord added to the church. The Lord added to the church. We go out and we do the work. We go out and be obedient to the Word of God. We go out and continue to do what the Bible tells us to do. But it's the Lord that adds to the church. I can't forgive anybody. I can't save anybody. But the Lord can. And the story continues in the third chapter. We get down there in the first verse. We start seeing, now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. And so we all know what happened. They come down there and there's a lame man and he's walking by and Peter said, look at us. And that lame man looked expecting to receive alms. That lame man looked going, oh, they're going to give me a piece of money. And Peter said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, I give unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise and walk. And it said, and immediately, remember back in, back before, immediately, immediately, he sprung up. He, his ankle bones received his strength. And they went on. See, we need to understand that we're doing all that stuff. You know, these men didn't have degrees. They didn't have anything else going on. So they get called. They get called and they get arrested by the men. They get arrested. They get taken in. And Peter says there in the seventh verse, it says, uh, the fourth chapter, it said, and, and when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? And Peter, filled with the Holy Amen. Ghost, said to them, ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means is he made whole? Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand before you whole. Yeah. 
The 12th verse says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby men must be saved. And the 13th verse says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unmerned and ignorant, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. See, they saw the boldness. They saw the things that Peter and John had been arrested for. For what? They were arrested for the purpose of healing a lame man. For a lame man being uh -huh. healed. And they were brought before the court again saying, why are you doing this? By what authority? He goes, by the authority of Jesus yes. Christ. Yeah. By the authority of Jesus Christ. Yeah. The Son of God. Yeah, he goes, listen to me. He goes, you all know who he is. You all know he told them again. In that 13th verse, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. And they marveled. The only thing that they could think about is that they had been with Jesus. See, they didn't have those, they didn't have those big degrees. They hadn't gone to Bible uh, seminary or school or college. They didn't have all that stuff. But they had been with Jesus. Yes. See, there are many men and, and women across the nation that may have a Ph.D. behind their name, that might have a Master of Divinity behind their name, but have they been with Jesus? Oh, have they been with Jesus? See, that was the difference. In the 18th yeah. verse, he continued to talk, and he says, And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken to you more than to God, you judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. See, you guys can say what you want. You guys can do what you want. But we're not going to shut up because you tell us to shut up. We can't help but to say about the things we've seen. We can't help but testify about the things we've heard. We're going to go out there and tell all those things. The 31st verse said, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. When the Spirit came, they spake the word of God with boldness. The 32nd verse, it says, and the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all the things in common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. See, we need to understand, when we have that spirit come upon us, we're going to speak boldly. And it says there, there are three things about the church that we need to understand. We need to be unified. It says that 32nd verse, they were all of one heart and one soul. And it says, and they were generous. It said they didn't care about the things that they possessed was his own. They had all things in common. They shared what they had. They were generous with their brothers and sisters. And finally, in the 33rd verse, it said they had a witness. It says, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection. We need to understand that we're going to have to have a great witness in this last day. We have to have unity. Can you imagine if the church of Jesus Christ, and I'm not talking about Pentecostal, I'm not talking about Baptist, I'm not talking about Presbyterian, I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about the true saints of God, who sent to us the blood of Jesus, following after him. If we all came together with one mind, with one accord, think about the shape that this land would be in. If the millions of people that call themselves Christians came together with one mind and one accord, we would have been afraid of this Jesus is the answer. It's not about all this other stuff. It's about treating men and women the same. It's about loving your brother, preferring your brother to yourself. We need to understand that. Too many times we follow after this and we start listening to man. We start listening to different doctrines. We start listening to different opinions. But I'm telling you, the only words that matter are these words right here. These are the only words that matter. We need to understand that. We need to understand. We need to carry the banner of Jesus Christ. We need to carry that banner out there and be one walking under that banner. Yes. But too many times we got somebody over here with this flag doing their own thing and somebody over there with that flag wanting to do their own thing. We need to unite under one flag. The United States united under one flag at one time. Amen. One nation Amen. under God. Yes. One nation yes. under God. Yes. And we need to return to that. We need to understand that. If we're focused on carrying his flag to a lost and dying world, if we come together with one mind to carry his banner out there to a lost and dying world and tell them that there's only one way to get to heaven, that all this ism and schism, all these little bitty things would just fall by the wayside. The second thing there in that 32nd 
verse that it says, they were generous. See, it said, no one claimed any possessions that was his own, but they shared everything that they had. See, after the church saw that empty tomb, after the church saw that empty tomb, they realized that this life is temporary. After they saw that empty tomb and realized that resurrection was waiting for them, they didn't worry about having the biggest house. They didn't worry about having the best chariot. They didn't worry about, you know, having money set up for retirement. They realized the only thing we could do is, you know, do everything we can for each other. Do everything we can for each other. James White wrote a book, You Can Experience the Authentic Life. And he talked about one of his history professors when he was in college. He had a history professor that was a Christian. And once a week, his history professor would go to a nursing home. And he would spend time there at the nursing home once a week with these people. Because a lot of people, you know, that are in nursing home, their family comes to visit them pretty regularly. But there's some that just get dumped there by their kids because they don't have time. So he would go and he'd visit these people. And one of his students said, oh, you must really love and enjoy, you know, the gift that you've got for, you know, visiting these people. He goes, no. He goes, are you kidding? He goes, you think I enjoy going there? I don't have a gift for that. I don't enjoy it. He, the, the student was talked, taken aback. He goes, you know, you're stepping over bedpans. You smell different things. He goes, and you, you're talking to people, and they forget what they're saying to you right in the middle of saying it. He goes, every week it's a, it's a new experience. He goes, then why do you go? He goes, because that's where Jesus would go. And I'm a follower of Jesus, and I'm going to do what Jesus wants me to do. Come on. See, we need to understand. Amen. We can't just be worried about giving our money. We can't be worried about Amen. just giving the things that we have materially. But we've got to give our time. Yeah. We've got to give our talent. Yeah. We've got to give the other things that we have. Yeah. Because we've got to be filled with a concern for I those people it. that are lost in sin. And as the, church, as the world starts seeing us unified, as the church starts seeing us generous, start to share the things that we have with them. And I don't mean material things, but don't be afraid to talk to a sinner. Don't be afraid to tell them what Jesus Christ has done for you. As we start showing a concern for this lost and dying world, we'll start understanding that's exactly what Jesus said. I'm going to give you power to be witnesses to Samaria, to Judea, to Jerusalem, and to the uttermost parts of the world. And that's the third thing, a great witness. See, with great power, he said in that 33rd verse, he was going to do that. He said, I'm going to give you great power to be witnesses. I'm going to give you great power to be witnesses. See, and because he gave that church great power in the beginning, as Peter spilled out there, and all these people were speaking in tongues, it said people started coming around. See, when you start making a commotion for Jesus, People will come around. Some people will come around because they want to see the show. Some people will come around because they want to really know what's going on. Some people will come around because they want to find out what, what can it happen for me. See, we need to be out there doing the things that God has called us to do. Yeah. Be out there in the highways, the byways, the alleys, the hedges, wherever it is. Compel them and tell them about Jesus. Tell them that the tomb is empty. Tell them that this life is temporary. Yeah. Tell them that there's two destinations. Yeah. One is heaven, one is hell. And there's only one way to get to heaven. It's a, it's a straight, it's a narrow way. But the way to go to the other place is big and broad and wide, and you don't want to go there. See, we need to understand the church has been given a mission. We need to be unified. We need to be generous. And we need to be witnesses in these last days. As my wife comes to the piano, I'm going to tell a story. I tell a story every week. But this, is, this one's about uh, something that happened in the 2000 Olympics in Sydney, Australia. Uh, there was a gentle, gentleman's name, his name was Eric Musabani. He was from Equatorial Guinea. He was a 22-year-old African young man, um, and he was there to swim in the 100-meter freestyle. Now, the reason this was so interesting was uh, Eric had just learned to swim a few months earlier. He had never swam, swam more than 50 meters, and he was entering the 100-meter race. Um, but he was there because the International Olympic Committee started allowing certain in, impoverished countries to send representatives to their country. And he was one of the few people that was willing to go to the Sydney uh, Olympics. So he, he had only been swimming for a few months, never swam more than 50 meters, that's 50 yards. So it's about twice as long for me, for me to the back of the church. So you have to swim there and back. So, and do that three to, I mean, twice to do the 100 meters. Well, three guys from the same situation, two other guys from impoverished countries, they were running a heat to see if they could swim fast enough to qualify for the next 
Well, there was, there was two false starts. The guy to his left got disqualified. The guy to his right got disqualified. And so when, hit was, when the, the gun sounded, he jumped in the water and started swimming. And the Associated Press said he was comically inept. What that meant was they were afraid he was going to drown. He, was, he never put his head under the water. He never swam like you, know, you used to see him, nice and smooth. He was basically trying to beat all the water out of the pool and walk out on dry ground. <laughs> he, he just, as hard as he could. But the crowd realized what was going on, and they stood up, and they started cheering, and they started applauding. Now, he finished that race 100 meters, and he was nearly two minutes over the time it would have taken to qualify to go to the next race. But as he got to the end of that, he was hanging on for dear life because he didn't have any strength to pull himself out of the pool because he'd been flailing his arms so hard. And when they finally drug him up out of the pool through a translator, he said, I would love to give hugs and kisses to all the crowd because without you, I couldn't have made it. Wow. See, that's the way it is. We may feel that we're flailing. Come on. We may feel that we're just Come drowning. On. About to go but our brothers and sisters, there's a whole herd of witnesses like we talked about in yeah. Hebrews, the 11th chapter last week. There's a whole herd of witnesses standing yeah. up there right looking on. down and they're cheering going, you can make it. Yeah. You can do it. You can do it. Hang in there. Yeah. You can make it to the other side. Yeah, See, we can make it. it to the other side if we just hold on, if we just persevere, yeah. if we just stay in there. That's our prayer today. It's Pentecost Sunday. Mm -hmm. Some 2,000 years ago, the church started but we still have the same mission. We still have the same yeah. commission that Jesus gave us over 2,000 years ago. Go to all the world, teach and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's all stand. If you don't feel like you're unified in the body of Christ,